Let checks out the phone. C. I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with a will of heart. And praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our saints and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In the third month after their departure from the land of Egypt, on its first day, the children of Israel came to the desert of Sinai, after the journey from Rephidim to the desert of Sinai. While Israel was at Gath here in front of the mountain, the Lord told Moses, I am coming to you in a dense cloud, so that when the people hear me speaking with you, they will always have faith in me also. When Moses then had reported to the Lord the response of the people, the Lord go to the people and have them sacrifice themselves today to tomorrow. Make them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. On the third day, the Lord will come down at Mount Sinai and take on the eyes of the On the morning of the third day, there were peals of thunder and lightning, and a heavy cloud over the mountain, and a very loud trumpet blast, so that all the people in the camp trembled. But Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God. And they stationed themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all wrapped in smoke, for the Lord came down upon it in fire. The smoke rose from it as though from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled by it. The trumpet blast grew louder and louder. While Moses was speaking, God answered him with thunder. When the Lord came down to the top of Mount Sinai, he summoned Moses to the top of the mountain with the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sponsorial song. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers. Praise for you, exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name. Praise for you, and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and, and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you who look into the depths of your throne upon the city, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the world the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Proclamation of the free gospel of the Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you. But to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and they hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You should indeed hear but not understand, you should indeed look but never see. Cross is the heart of his people, they will hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and hear, to what, and hear what you hear, but did not hear it. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be your Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as, as, we, as we mentioned, uh, the, the, the chapter 13 of Matthew is um, it's really a, a, a chapter of parables. As we said yesterday, there were eight parables and then two explanations of the, of the two parables. And then here you have, you have uh, almost like a, a break, so to speak, of uh, Christ explaining the purpose of the parables and because he was asked why do you speak to them in parables of course parables are no parables are stories no? and uh, very often the, the the general you might say rule or pattern of a parable is that it always uses familiar images uh things that are familiar to the audience no? and then and then number two is more often than not no a parable is a very a very single you know, single lesson no? Uh, so those are those are two qualities of a parable. And I guess when, when you look at it, even up to now, no? when, when people give talks, when people give homilies, you know, the power of the story, the power of the narrative is very important. And so that's the first point that I'd like to invite you to reflect on, no? the power of stories and narratives in our life. And then second is, um, what is, what is also the effect, no? Of a, of a good narrative, of a good story. So there's a second point that we will reflect on. And then the third and last point that I invite you to reflect on is what the Lord says us at the end of the Gospel. He said, blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are we. So it's a third point that we we'll reflect on. First about, about the, the power of the narrative. No? Uh, of course, you know, we've always heard that, that uh, line that, you know, that the Gospel is the greatest story that has been that has been ever told. No? And um, and if you take a look at it, the gospel really is the story of the journey of the early church, of the apostles, and the, the journey of faith. No? And, and precisely what, what this story, one of the goals of this story is for it to evoke in us our own faith story, our own faith journey. And that is the power of the narrative, that is the power of a story. No? In a sense, it, it helps us really understand what is going on inside that in the interior, but even what is going on around us. No? In a sense, stories or narratives of a society or a community, these define the character and, and, and really the core values of a community. It, stories help us understand who we are, and stories also help us understand our purpose. No? The power of stories, and the Lord is a great storyteller. The parables were, were very effective stories that he used and to drive home a point, to teach people a lesson, to, or to even to expose, no? to expose the, the, the ills of his time. Maybe that first point to reflect on, you know, to ask yourself, ask ourselves, what are the stories that define us? Or what are the stories that have defined us? I'm sure you have a story of, 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 of your, your parents or someone that, or your grandparents or someone that you emulated and that helped shape you. Uh, for example, one of my favorite stories is that what Father Howard Howard uh, Howard Gray was asked, why are you such a respectful person? And then he tells the story of how, as a seven-year-old, he asked his grandmother who was cleaning the cabinets, no, where do babies come from? No? And so he said, his grandmother stopped sat him down in the, in, the, in the sofa and explained to him not about uh, the stork, etc., the birds and the bees, but explains you know, how, how a husband and a wife love each other, and then how they, how they have uh, the marital act, they perform the marital act out of love for one another, and the fruit of that 
is and then explain the biological process of how a baby is conceived, etc. And then you know, Father Howard Gray said that, you know, I always go back to that story that I remembered uh, when I was growing up. And he said, as you're going through, through formation, you always remember that story because for him, he was very moved and touched by the respect of his grandmother who stopped what she was doing, took time to talk to her, not 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 gibberish her to speak, but something that he would understand. And you know, that story gives you a very powerful, powerful example of why we should respect people regardless of age no? and to be able to talk to them and speak to them the truth. No? So you see that that very simple story gives us a whole sense of meaning and, and makes us remember what is our experience of that, of a person respecting us. No? So the power of stories. No? And then the second point is, you know, um, here the Lord says that the Lord said something very beautiful here, and, and for me this is a process. No, He said, no, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, so the, to see or to hear, and then to understand. And and through understanding, it is to be it is to be healed no? or to be to be converted. No? And I guess that is the power of, of I don't know, it's the power of the story also. No? Uh, for me, I'd like to see that as a step by step process no? as we. As we try to understand and see, you might say, what is the what is the meaning and what is the lesson of a story? We need to we need to hear it with, with our with, with, with really with our heart no? and to see it with the eyes of our heart and to be able to understand. And this must lead us to conversion. This must lead us to going back to the Lord no? and to be healed, and because it is it is our deepening our relationship with the Lord that heals us, that makes us whole, that integrates us. So you see that, in a sense, these are, these are you might say, step-by-step -step effects no, of a very good and powerful narrative that will, that will make a difference in our lives. And then the, the third and last point is that, you know, the Lord said, no, blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen. I say to many prophets and righteous peoples, long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Of course, the difference is the cross and resurrection. Because the cross and resurrection is what really, in a sense, opens the, the entire revelation of God, and we hear that final revelation of God. Remember that 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 that, that line: "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." listen to him and we listen to him in the mystery of the cross and resurrection that is why we are blessed blessed are you who see blessed are you who hear because we have been given the gift of the cross and resurrection so siguro ngayong araw siguro magandang pagdilaya natin no? yung kahalagahan itong sabi nga di ba ang mga parable ay mga kwento no? itong mga kwento na meron isang malinaw na turo o aral na binibigay sa atin at ito ay gumagamit ng mga imahe na pamilyar sa mga tao. At ito yung, ano, ito yung masasabi natin, isang katangian ng magandang kwento. Kasi ang kwento ang siyang nag, ano, ang, ang pumupukaw. Ano? Pag merong magandang kwento, di ba meron yung pinupukaw na kwento sa ating sariling karanasan? Ano? Kagaya nung binahagi ko na si Father Howard Gray na bilang isang maliit na bata itong taon. Ano? Naramdaman niya yung respeto ng nanay niya sa kanya. Ano? Kasi tinanong siya, bakit napaka napakagalang ng tao. No? At kinento niya, no? kasi nung bata ako, ginalang ako ng aking lola. Kinunto niya yung ginagawa kasi tinanong ko paano nagkakaroon ng mga baby. At pinaliwanag sa akin na hindi yung parang mga fairy tale na paliwanag ko, hindi talaga ano ba ang nangyayari no? sa mag-asawa at kung pa paano nagbubuntis at pinapanganak. Ano? Makita mo yung kwento na yun, ang siyang nag, ano, no? mag maganda, yung, maganda yung kanyang higit na pagpapalalim ng pagpapaunawa ng kahulugan ng paggalang sa tao dahil sa isang kwento. Kaya siguro, di ba, isipin natin, ano nga ba itong mga kwento ito sa aking buhay na naghugis o naghubog sa aking pagkatao? Yun yung kahalagahan ng mga kwento. At siguro mahalaga na makita rin natin, di ba, sa isang mahusay na kwento kagaya ng Ebanghelyo, sabi nga ng Panginoon, di ba, makinig na, makinig natin at makita natin yung aral o yung kwento at dahil dito maunawaan natin ang nais 
nais na is na is na hihitid sa atin na mensahe at ito ay dapat ay lagi ng dadala sa ating pagbabalik loob at paghilom ng ating pagkataon ng ating, ng ating spirito. At yung huling punto nga na sinabi ng Panginoon sa Evangelyo ay sabi niya mapapalad kayo sapagkat ito ay ito ang nakikita ninyo at ang naririnig ninyo ay, ay ito, ang, ito ang dinais ng mga propeta pero hindi nila naranasan. At para sa atin lalo na, no? kasi nakita na natin, narinig natin ang krus at muling pagkabuhay na siyang pinaka, masasabi natin pinakahuli at pinakabuong pagbubunyag ng Diyos sa atin ng kanyang pagpamahal. Siguro may marami nilin natin ano, na nasama nga ay mapalalim natin ang pagunawa natin sa sariling mga kwento ng ating buhay. Let us ask the Lord to help us really understand you know, what are the narratives that define us and to be able to grow from understanding these narratives into realizing also our own story, our own journey in following Christ. Christ teaches us through parables. Christ is the sower of the seed of God's word. Let us respond to his word by praying to the Father. Let the church in the world may be like the rich soil, yielding a hundredfold harvest. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let the leaders of our nation may divert in a way which is pleasing to God to its citizens. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let unchecked ambitions and selfishness may never choke the word of God in our lives. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now offer a all the, let us now pray for all the intentions that uh, the people have asked us to remember at this Mass. For all this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. brothers and sisters, Amen. that this, our Amen. sacrifice, may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Huh? May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each is offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the, the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. With love, we celebrate His death. With living faith, we proclaim His resurrection. With unwavering hope, we await His return to the And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end, we claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread He gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
again, he gave the thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. I proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, the clergy, the entire people your son has gained for you. Accept, Father Most Holy, all the intentions commended to our prayers at this Mass. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and from the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace and good you. Lord, we beg you not to look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace, the unity and the joy of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. My dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins, the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that we should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us spend a few moments of silence. Together now let us offer our prayer of humble faith and hope. Merciful and compassionate Father, we humbly come before you with faith and hope. 
Grant us your grace and guidance as we emerge from this pandemic. We thank you for the blessings that saw us through the challenges of the past years. Reward those who selflessly serve and continue to serve our many needs. Console those who suffered. Heal the sick. Grant eternal rest to those who died. May we draw inspiration from our collective and individual experiences. Let our hearts burn within us to build a world closer to your kingdom of justice, truth, equality, peace, joy, faith, hope, compassion, and love. May each of us be a bright candle to remind us that light will overcome darkness and never the other way around. We pray for our nation. Give us the courage and inspiration to relentlessly take part in the project of building a nation that our founding fathers envisioned over a century ago, into which succeeding generations offered their lives and dedicated service, some to the point of martyrdom. Heroes also Filipinos may continue to work for freedom and someday truly be free. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, Patroness of the Philippines, pray for us. Our Lady of the Four Christians and Heart of the Sick, pray for us. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Croc, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calixo, pray for us. Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Saint Antonio de Sevilla, have mercy on us. Divine Mercy, have mercy on us. And let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those that are imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Maraming po salamat.